This is the Awkward GM Corbin, and today I'm finally unpacked from all this moving. And and we're going to be talking about Better Feared Nosferatu, which is also awesome. The book comes with eight bloodlines, a 50-50 split on updated and brand new ones. There are rules for making underground necropoli for your Nosferatu to hang out in. There are new masks, new dirges, devotions, merits, and alternative clan banes, as well as three ghoul families and three horrors that haunt the night. The Candyman, or Peddlers, are Nosferatus who infuse food with their blood to bloodbind people to them. They gain the dominant discipline. They have the Sweet Stuff uh, bloodline gift, which allows them to infuse consumables with nearly undetectable vitae, and they have the bloodline curse of Sweet Sin Curse. They crave a particular type of victim for feeding and sometimes cannot get sustenance from anything else unless they use a concoction. I really want to thank the uh, Dork Tales storyteller Kelly Clark for writing this bloodline. It's probably my favorite Nosferatu bloodline in the entire book. If you really want to check out how it plays, he actually has a player running one in his Party Monsters actual play that's currently going on. And her name's Jillian Bean, and it's very funny to see a Nosferatu that is just so chipper and so happy, yet is doing stuff that I am scared to even mention on my channel for b being demonetized or something, even though I'm not monetized yet. Subscribe if you haven't, that'll help monetize this channel. Would I run Candyman Kanderman, Kanderman, um, as NPCs? Yes, I would. And would I run them as a player character? Definitely would. This is a very interesting player character choice, and it reminds me a lot of the stories I heard about the Tremere in Vampire the Masquerade, where you never accepted food from a Tremere because you didn't know if they tainted it in some way with their own blood. And that's exactly what the Candymen do. The Actius, or Artisans, are Nosferatus who can make uh, weapons and equipment out of crystallized blood. They gain the Celerity Discipline, they also gain the Taste Merit, and they gain the Bloodline Gift of Bloodcrafting, which allows them to create the objects out of Vitae. They also have the Hidebound Curse. When they suffer a setback or unlikely turn of events, it causes them to become tempted. This bloodline gift really reminds me of Gangrel, in that Gangrel can turn their hands into claws and such, and instead of turning their body into weapons, they turn their blood into weapons and hold them and such. I definitely would run these as NPCs. They could really be good for as a as an antagonist or even as like sort of like an equipment equipment dealer. I'm not too sure if the equipment lasts more than like a day but I would definitely run them as a player character. They, they seem really fun and really interesting to me. If you'd like to support the channel, please take a look at the links below for Warlock Sanctum Games. They are the sponsor for this video. The Coxcomb Society are Nosferatu, who are upper-class people who used to participate in the slave trade by selling kindred to the Hellfire Society. They gain the Majesty Discipline, and they have the Bloodline Gift of Old Money, which means they gain the Dynasty Membership Merit for the Society, and gain access to one dot of allies, contacts, or resources for each dot of Dynasty Membership they have in the Society. The Bloodline Curse they have is Curse of Ennui. They have a harder time to resist their bestial, competitive, or wanton desires. Now for me, the society doesn't really rate highly as far as bloodlines go that I would like to play, but they definitely rate high in an antagonist position, because they have that built-in story of them used to selling kindred to the Hellfire Club hunters. And that's something I could see definitely bringing up as a plot hook for my character my players to follow. Um, it might be a little one note, but there's probably something you can do to sort of mix it up where maybe they've stopped selling kindred to um, hunters, but they're now selling to other groups such as demons or even trufe. And that being said, the society could be very against this practice, but some members, some minority of the group are trying to keep it going. The Gethsemane, also known as Statics, are the Nosferatu Christian Zealots. They gain majesty and replace vigor with resilience discipline. 
Their bloodline gift is the Stigmatica bloodline gift. They can use Theban sorcery and can take damage as sacrifice instead of providing a sacrament. Additionally, they gain new Theban sorcery miracles to cast, and they get the bloodline curse, the Stigmatist curse. These Nosferatu gain injuries similar to those inflicted on Christ during his crucifixion when they awaken, unless they spend Vitae to negate. And I just realized I forgot to put the miracles in, so here they are if you want to check out what they can do. The book goes into more detail about what kin other kindred think about them. Some aren't sure if they are actually religious, or they're just charlatans who use their stigmata to um, convert people to sort of their cult. Um, honestly, I don't know where I would land with them. I think it's probably an individual basis, like some people are truly um, religious while others are using that religion for profit. I definitely run them as antagonists, though I don't see myself running them as a player. I'm not one for religious characters, although in the rules you can technically take them in any covenant, not just Lacey Sanctum. Keepers of the Dark, or the Wardens, are Nosferatu that have created sort of a mystical labyrinth that they are the guardian of. Um, they gain access to Auspex and replace Vigor with the Resilience Discipline. Um, they gain access to the Merit, that is essentially their bloodline gift, called Labyrinth, but they also get a bunch of other Merits as well that help them better control the maze. Even a devotion called Master of the Maze, which allows them to move it around with their mind, which I find so damn awesome. Their bloodline curse is the Radiant Curse, which means they are attracted to shiny objects and get distracted by them, just like all of us. This is also a really good Nosferatu bloodline. I really wish I could play them as a player character, but the problem I have is that all of their bonuses are really geared towards the labyrinth, and what you'll end up doing is trying to convince people to come to the labyrinth and fight them there, which isn't always the case that you can do in most games. However, I would definitely run these guys as antagonists, and if your storyteller can like support you well enough, maybe, just maybe, you'll be able to play these as a player character too and be very happy. I hope I can be that happy one day. Oh, I'm married. I'm already that happy. The Lagos, or the Shades, are Nosferatus that like complete darkness. They gain the Auspex Discipline, and they also gain the True Worm Merit. They also have the Bloodline Gift of Truths of Erebus, which are similar to the Coils of the Dragon that the Ordo Dracul get. Um, they have a bunch of them, uh, they're listed here. Um, their bloodline curse is the Luminous Curse, which means while they're in bright light, the Lygoses in human nature is more pronounced and they are more likely to frenzy. These seem very much like a combination of the Nosferatu and Maquette uh, clans, which is very interesting. Definitely Nosferatu are known for hiding in the shadows a lot, not as much as the Maquette, which are based off of the La Sombra, La Sombra characters in uh, Vampire the Masquerade, but honestly the Shades are an aspect of the Nosferatu that I like. The Shades are a bloodline that I definitely could see running as a player. Um, they're, it's a lot more versatile than a lot of the other bloodlines that are listed in this video. Um, also, I could definitely see them as antagonists, though probably as like thieves or uh, other creatures that other other occupations or character types that like to be in the darkness. Um, I definitely would give it a go. And honestly, because you're a vampire, you're probably going to be near darkness a lot more than other splats are. Von Schreck family are based off of the classical Nosferatu silent movie. Um, they gain the Majesty Discipline, and they also gain the Bloodline Gift, Know Your Audience. Von Schreck sometimes make videos and stain a copy of them with Vitae. Anyone who watches the finalized product, grant the Von Schrecks 9 again on Empathy, 
expression, and intimidate checks on the viewer up to a month after viewing. They also have the Bloodline Curse of Exhibitionist Curse, which means while feeding they must be in the presence of a mortal witness or spend willpower in order to gain vitae from the feeding. If I didn't say it before, the Von Schreck are also known as Scream Queens, and I have to say, better feared Nosferatu is kicking it out of the park with all of these bloodlines. I, I don't think there's a single one that I dislike at all, and that's saying something. Now, for the Scream Queens, or for the Von Schreck, I definitely would run them as an antagonist. The idea that they send out copies of movies that they've made, usually horror movies, is something I could really get into. It's very, um, The Ring. Now, as a player, um, I would say they are a little bit more versatile than the Wardens, but they're not as versatile as the Shades. So. While I like the idea of them, I'm not sure if I'd run them as a player character because basically your storyteller is going to have to like shoehorn in scenarios for you to just send people videos. I mean, maybe your character is a thief or something or has like security camera footage that they will like give to detectives or something to basically cause them to be afflicted by their bloodline gift. Which is an interesting concept, and if you want, you can just run with it, take it. It's it's yours to do with as you will. The Yagnashia, or also known as the Boyars, are Russian Nosferatu spiritualist warlords. That's a lot of descriptors for a Nosferatu bloodline. Um, they gain the Dominate Discipline. They also gain the bloodline gift of new Kruak rites that they can take outside of the Circle of the Crone Covenant. Um, I've listed them all here, please go over them at your leisure. They also have the Curse of the Billabog, which means that the Yagnashia find it difficult to resist the noumena of ephemeral beings or the dread powers of the Strix. Interesting, it's almost as if this has lore implications that the Strix are ephemeral in nature and not just shadows. Perhaps the spirits of a giant shadow owl that shattered into a million pieces? But that's just a theory. A game theory! As far as this bloodline goes, it's all about manipulating spirits, and that's something that not a lot of vampire bloodlines do. Vampires themselves don't really interact with uh, spirit, the spirit world much. They sometimes do interact with ghosts, but not necessarily spirits. Um, that's what I like about them. They could really do well in a werewolf pack, but as an antagonist, I, I mean, an NPC, I could see them as NPCs, not necessarily antagonists. As a player character, um, I definitely could run one. I would, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be on the top of my list, but it's not something I would never run. I, I really like it. There will be a link in the description below to purchase this PDF. Um, if you like the video, please like, subscribe, uh, send me tip money through Ko-fi, through PayPal. Um, also, if you really want to find out more about other bloodlines, you can check out this video playlist over here. It will have all the bloodlines there. And thank you so much for watching and have a good one.